What is up, everybody? This is Fucked420 here with my top five games of 2015. Now, I didn't play every game that came out last year, but I'm going to list my top five favorite that I did play, and I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Number five. So, number five is Batman Arkham Knight. The console version, not the shitty PC port. Uh, so the reason this is number five is because I enjoy the living fuck out of this game for about, I don't know, I put, I put like 40, 50 hours into it. And uh, the story was pretty interesting. Uh, towards the end, it became, it became mighty uh, predictable, but nah, whatever. Um, the gameplay was fucking awesome. It's basically exactly like the other, the past Arkham games, uh, the combat-wise. Um, the world is fucking huge. It's got three different islands to explore, and it's got to take into account for the uh, Batmobile, which, the reason it is number five on my list, one of the main reasons is... There was way too much fucking Batmobile, and if anyone tries to tell you different, fucking smack him in the face, because holy fuck. I mean, it was fun, but it had to have been, like, over 50, 50 to 60 percent of the fucking game here in the goddamn Batmobile, which I prefer using the bat grapple fucking thing and going all over the place and going on the rooftops like Batman should be doing, not in his fucking bat tank. Uh, but, yeah, so Batman, Arkham Knight, number five. Number four. Alright, number four is Techland's Dying Light. And I had a lot of fucking fun with this game. Uh... The story was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't anything special. It had pretty predictable fucking plot twists on it. Eh, whatever. The gameplay is where it's at, though. Holy shit, this is a fun game. It's like ten times better than than Dead Island, in my personal opinion. The, uh, the parkour elements are pretty cool. There's some gunplay. And mostly what you'll be doing is melee combat because the guns actually the guns are pretty shitty unless you're fighting the humans but uh, and the ammo is very limited too but uh, you get two uh, three different skill trees to level up you get their agility your combat and uh, another one like overall shit I, I'm, I'm spacing on the names but yeah you know and there is online play to this. It's basically exactly like Dead Island, but you're just not on an island. So, but uh, in the maps, there's two. Uh, there's one really decently sized one, and then the the second map, which you're in for, I'd say, I don't know, just a little under half the game. That's not uh, not as big, but still fun to explore. Exploring is ridiculously fun, the like looting and everything like that. Um, but at nighttime is where the shit really goes down. You get double experience points, and things will fuck you up. The volatiles will fuck your day up pretty much. And just like all the dangerous, more dangerous enemies come out at night, and it is very, uh, very interesting, very uh, cool take on the zombie genre. So, Dying Light, number four. Number three. So number three is From Software, Japan Studios, very fucking annoying and very frustrating Bloodborne. So 
Bloodborne, uh, as I said, is one of the most difficult games I have ever fucking played in my life. But it is very re rewarding when you do something that you've been trying to do for, I don't know, five to fucking ten hours. After grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding, but holy shit, this game is fun. The exploration in this game, uh, there's, m there's multiple branching paths. I mean, the, the maps that they put you in are pretty fucking large. It's not an open world game, but it's pretty goddamn fucking close. Uh, the weapons, there's a shit ton of weapons you can do, you can upgrade them, uh, you get different clothes, and you get, uh, like, a hat, uh, uh, fucking, what is it, like a shirt, or whatever the fuck it is, trousers and gloves, which all have different attributes, which is very cool. Uh, the bosses, holy fuck, the bosses will fuck your day up, at least, at least, once. If you're lucky, you can beat them on the second try. But the bosses are ridiculous. Uh, you can call in for help, like online, like you could in Dark Souls, which is pretty cool. Um, the There's very limited checkpoints, like in Dark Souls. Like, once you find a lamp, you can go, you can, if you die, which you will die, you will uh, respawn, you can choose to respawn from that lamp, or a lamp somewhere else that you you get. This game does not hold your hand whatsoever. You must, you gotta figure out shit on your own. It's basically like, oh, you wanna play our game? Fuck you, here you go. I'm not gonna tell you anything to do. So, it's cool in that aspect. The enemy designs are really fucking cool. So, I think the coolest enemy designs I've seen last year definitely goes to Bloodborne. Um, and, uh, yeah, did I mention it was fucking difficult? So, Bloodborne, number three, yeah. Number two. So number two is Bethesda's Fallout 4. And what can I say about Fallout 4 that that uh, hasn't been said by fucking everyone already? I don't know. But uh, the reason this is number two is because I really, really enjoyed the living shit out of this game. I platinumed this game in actually under a month. So I was pretty proud of myself about that fact. But, uh... The gameplay is insanely fun. They did a lot of upgrades from Fallout 3 and uh, New Vegas. Like the gun, the gunplay, holy fuck it is much better. You don't have to use the VAT system every five seconds if you want to shoot someone. Um, the, the weapon customization is fucking awesome addition. The armor customization is pretty cool. The settlement, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the settlement building. Uh, except for when I was trying to get that last trophy, the Benevolent Leader. Holy fuck. Uh, but uh, there is some things that I wish were in this. Like in Fallout 3 and New Vegas, the slider skills. I miss that. The perks, the perk system, level up system is pretty cool. But I really miss the sliders. That's one of, one of very few complaints that I had about this game. Uh, the companions are back in this game. Nah, uh, there's, there's uh, quite a few. There's like I think uh, over ten. I'm not sure, but there's quite a few. Um, another thing I didn't really care for about this game is there's only four factions you can choose to join: uh, the Minutemen, Institute, the Railroad, and uh, Brotherhood of Steel. I wish there was more, like the Enclave. That'd be cool if they were in this. Or if you could join the right, being able to join, being able to join the Raiders would be fucking cool. But that's just me. If you're doing like a bad playthrough, which by the way is pretty hard to do an evil playthrough in this because they got rid of the karma. But whatever, that's just little shit. The game is pretty big. It, I mean, the map is not Fallout 3 size or even New Vegas size. It's about the size of Skyrim. 
maybe a little smaller, but it is fucking packed with shit to explore. And the exploration and looting in this is fucking is awesome. But uh, yeah, so Fallout 4 is my number two. Alright, so it is time for number one, and this was a very, very tough decision to make between this game and Fallout 4, but I overall spent way more time with this game and I just enjoyed it a hell of a lot more, so let's get to number one. So, number one, as you can see, is Hideo Kojima's Metal Gear Solid 5. Fuck you, Konami. You're a piece of shit company. Um, so, the reason this is my number one is because I am a huge Metal Gear fan, and I just enjoyed this game the most this year, or last year. Uh, the story is fucking awesome, as expected in a Metal, Gears, Metal Gear game, but it is on the short side. It is definitely the weakest out of the stories in Metal Gear, any Metal Gear game, my opinion, but... Um, this is Metal Gear's first attempt at an open world game, and holy fuck, it does its job. It is amazing. The gameplay is fucking awesome. You can choose how you want to infiltrate any base or any mission. If you wanted to attack it from the north, the west, fucking northwest, the south, fucking southeast, what? It doesn't fucking matter. You can do whatever you want. Um,. You can go in stealthily, which I prefer, because I, I mean I played every single other Metal Gear. And that's how I play, or that's how you're supposed to play. Or you can do a guns blazing. I don't recommend it, but you can, which is fucking awesome. You have the freedom to do whatever the fuck you want, basically. Um, there's a high replay value, uh, because you got you got 50 main missions. You got I think it's like 157. Side ops, don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, the side ops do get a little repetitive, but I mean, doesn't everything for when you play it long enough? <laughs> but no, if you if you take like a like a week or a couple days or two week off, and then you come back to it, you'll be like, oh yeah, this is, this is not bad. Uh, that's what I have to do to com to complete all the side ops, but it's still fun. Uh, there's partners in this, which is a first for Metal Gear. You get D-Dog, D-Walker, and Quiet, and I, I oh, D-Horse, that's the other one. Quiet is the best, but, He's yeah, I'm not gonna spoil. Um, the vehicles, you can paint, you can paint them. There's not really that much customization. Mother Base, also, you can paint, and you can paint it with fucking red or whatever the fuck you want. Uh, there's Outer Ops, which makes a return from Peace Walker, which is pretty cool. And they added gun customization, which I really, really like. It's fucking it's awesome to be able to put, like, um, in the fucking shotgun on your assault rifle or whatever the fuck. I mean, you could do it in Metal Gear 4, but it's not really... It's, it's much more in-depth than this one. Um, and another big thing about this is Metal Gear Online, which... If you like the gameplay of Metal Gear, the regular game, then you're gonna fucking love the gameplay of this, and it's gonna you're gonna spend a lot of time with it. Uh, you get three classes: you get a sniper, an infiltrator, and like a a median a medium in between guy there. I can't remember his name or the class name, but that's what I use. <laughs> so I, I don't even fucking know. Uh, the there's a shit ton of old Metal Gear tracks to choose from for you like your gameplay music, ranging from Metal Gear on the MSX all the way up to Metal Gear Solid 5, which I prefer. Metal Gear, Theme of Terra, or the Shadow Moses thing from Metal Gear Solid 1. Uh, the only downside I thought there was to Metal Gear Online is there's only six maps to choose from. Still better on Battlefront. <laughs> Fuck you, Battlefront. Uh, but you can do if you have 
the you can do like large scale maps map battles and bounty rush oh yeah there's bounty rush cloak and dagger and calm control you can choose from but mostly people play bounty rush uh but you could do rush mode on those maps so you make it smaller and obviously it's faster it's called fucking rush mode for fuck's sake uh but yeah metal gear online very fun metal gear solid 5 definitely get it if you're a fan of metal gear i don't know why you wouldn't have it Fucking Kojima's last Metal Gear. Uh, and if you're just a fan of fucking open world games and being able to do whatever the fuck you want, pick it up, definitely. So, Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, is my 2015 Game of the Year. Leave your Game of the Year down in the comments and like and subscribe for more content. And I will see you later. Peace.